recently i got to take an interview of mr vishal naidu who is an uh, masters candidate at university of utah uh, in game engineering track and the game you are looking at right now is the game he has created and he is the gameplay engineer of this game this game is called alternate control where you can uh, you can can alternate the controller between two players and have the enemy i will post the link down below to see the full trailer and let's see what vishal has to tell let's go thank you yeah it's actually it's my pleasure the, to have you in my one of my show no thanks man all right uh, so vishal the first thing i would like from you is to uh, introduce yourself and give a short description of what you do and that's that's the thing well in game development terms i'd say i'm a more of a general gameplay programmer so yeah, i like to involve a lot of mathematics into my work so mostly you'll see me moving a lot of objects around on the screen and mostly there'll be like uh the in game characters that you like i like to make things move as i say so yeah all right so it's, it's um, a very general description but yeah you get the idea right? <laughs> actually um i would actually like to like my audience to know that how i uh, actually know vishal it's actually from linkedin actually i am uh, trying to get in the same program vishal is currently right now and uh, he's a teaching assistant in university of utah which is a prestigious college in the whole world and uh, it's a great opportunity for me to know him as well so um actually uh, i just want you to know that this will be a very casual conversation and i want to okay. know your story like how uh, you are, have become so interested in this game development uh, what motivates you that's that's the kind of a thing so um, okay. just let's start from the beginning so uh, when you have made your first game I made my first game hmm well, my first game was uh, color shifter 2d a very simple uh endless runner oh i sorry i couldn't hear you uh you st- you have started with unity right yeah all I, right actually uh, i wanted a- to learn unreal first because i was uh, like super impressed with all the batman arkham games that i played till 2017 and 18 man that was good stuff so i just oh my god that, that's the that's the same game i have i have interest to get from like i have i played arkham knight oh. that's why i have no arc unreal engine oh beautiful stuff man yeah all right so uh, you have made your first game in uh, which year like uh, 2013 14 which year mm, well, i've been trying to like uh, like i wouldn't say a proper game but i've been trying to develop some things since 2016 mid or 17 all right so, yeah that's so, when i was in third and fourth year in my undergrad computer All science right. um so you are from mumbai right yeah all right so um which college uh, you have got your bachelor's like you have got your bachelor's in computer science right yeah and that um, was so uh, sardar patel institute of technology from oh mumbai. yeah I, i know one of my friend is there um, so it's, it's a very good college uh yeah i actually i know that uh, actually i'm from university of uh, engineering and management kolkata and um, actually i am really cool. interested uh, like people who are in this game development uh, industry like it really fascinates me like it takes a lot of courage to pursue uh, in this yeah, that's industry true. where we basically mm-hmm. from we are from india and we are very conservative and when we say our parents that we are going to pursue masters in game development and they are like what what game development <laughs> that's yeah really that be that's the usual reaction but i would say uh, yeah i'm really like 100% of whatever i am here today it's because of my parents because they've been very supportive of me being a game developer from the very start like i've played a whole lot of games since my childhood and they never like forced me like oh, yeah you know you need to play like one hour in a day or something yeah that was there when i tried to like uh, overgo the boundaries playing a lot of hours in a day but yeah i mean they know now that i'm so interested in them that i could see through what's going on 
behind uh, like all right uh, so, yeah. so uh, like uh, the in 2005 when i got my first computer my father brought that uh, windows xp uh, i so i uh, played my first game road rash uh, so what was your <laughs> first uh, i'd say uh, okay which year are you born in uh, i was born in 1998 oh that's cool i was born in 1997 so i'd say it's most of them like x group yeah even people from 1990s they have a lot of games in common you know uh, my first game was the prince of persia 1 that released uh, i think it was uh, that 2d game really like sure. white yeah. white uh, dress and it uh, well, just yeah, jumps white pajamas and yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that was cool cool actually prince of persia day aladdin <laughs> lion king road rash man these are like golden times Actually, I have a funny story around that. That oh, one day, uh, like my whole family loves to play games, and uh, one of my uncle loves it. So one day I was sleeping, and I when I woke up, I saw my uncle is playing Prince of Persia. And the first thing I said in the morning to him is, uh, "Hey, uncle, how many times you have died?" And the other <laughs> people around her was, "What? What are you saying?" Then then I have to tell them, "Actually, I was meant the game." <laughs> So yeah. that's the really funny story. Yeah, yeah Prince of Persia had a weird, uh, you know, gameplay logic. If you die once in the game, the game time reduces from sixty minutes to twenty minutes. So you have to like speed run through it. That was that was bad. I never completed the game properly. I died a thousand times. <laughs> But I that's, still love it. Uh, all right. So um, so uh, the first question I have uh, for you is uh, just. uh tell me that like you didn't do you know that in the from the beginning that you are going to uh, go for a masters in game development or uh, you had that uh, in some kind of middle in your bachelors or from where you have started growing this interest so i just want to know that uh i was pretty much interested in like what going on behind games since 11th 12th standard uh before undergrad started yeah but i never knew there was like masters in game development and stuff because in being in mumbai all i see around myself was computer science it mechanical all that usual stuff you know and yeah, yeah there's a there are very few institutes over here which teach you like game development but they go over through more like they have a very big curve and they try to teach you everything yeah that, that was good that was fun for a while but i thought i needed to go something more specific so i started searching for like what's higher education in games so yeah, i found a lot of stuff in university of utah caught my eye yeah well i would say my story really started when i ha- i had an internship in credit suisse i'd say it, that was fun but somehow i had a realization that i i don't want to be doing this for long you, you know general general programming that's not really my forte even if i'm good at it i get bored i don't want to see numbers <laughs> banking sector is not, not really my thing actually that's the thing actually that's happening for me like for me it's the story is that uh, you uh, obviously you can say that uh, from my name that i'm a bengali and um, at the in in kolkata it has a like very uh, conservative culture that first go for a go try go for a medical if not then go for engineering and if not then there will be some other options so when i started my engineering i didn't know programming so after, in the middle of like 2018 i made my first game that roller ball game in unity and that's where i started having this enormous passion it's it's just for two and one and a half years right now. so uh, it's oh yeah i saw your website man that was pretty cool stuff in there uh, thank you so much thank you so much actually um yeah. actually all i have done is uh going to youtube uh take a t- tutorial just made it and just made it just like that's how i did like i don't have any procedure and i just know how this game development paradigm works like how game developers work so that's why i wanted to know more and that's why i want to do a masters and 
from that this GRE, this uh, US application, that's why that's all it began. So um, as I have said, we are going to totally on your story. So uh, let's go back in 2016 when you have started, uh, like you have said the 2016 or 17, uh, 15, I, have, I guess you have started uh, your undergraduate. I around that time. Yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Uh, actually, you have started uh, your undergraduate in 2015, right? Uh, 14. 2014. 14 to, uh, 14 to 18. All right. So uh, from 14 to 18, uh, just tell us like how your journey has uh, like grow like from a student to a beginner in this game development to uh, one of the best colleges in the whole world in the game development. How this story, how this journey has gone? Okay. Hmm. If I do start with like really my undergrad, I'd say uh, I was really, really interested in physics and geometry by then. Uh, like my whole phase of this 11, 12th and undergrad was like I, I got so involved with physics that I wanted to learn how things move and stuff. So, uh, it, you know, when you play soccer, you kind of want to know why knuckleballs happen, why the ball doesn't stay on path and why it curls when it has swings. Yes. What? You, uh, you really love simulation, I guess, like physical simulation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, really. <laughs> I want to know why things happen. <laughs> yeah, I tried to like uh, go through different formulas and like whatever simulations there are that uh, try to mimic what happen in real life. Yeah, I was really obsessed with projectile physics, you know, Magnus effect, Coriolis effect, and all of those. Yeah, me and my brother, we go through all of that stuff. That's That was really fun. But yeah, in my undergrad, um, I think the first two years were pretty simple. I was just a programmer by then, you know, data structures and that stuff. So yeah, mostly um, I try to imagine how data would flow through it, and I try to just mimic the functionality in code we had c oh yeah oh, by the way i i never started c plus plus until 2017 or 18 that's when i began with unreal engine so yeah third year was a kind of breakthrough for me because uh i wanted to try something making a game yeah basically that was my idea i, I was like fed up playing so many games as a battlefield 4 freak i played battlefield 4 for like three years and then yeah, I, I got bored of games. I wanted to make some. So yeah, uh, the first thing I did was download and install CryEngine. You, you started CryEngine, that's-, that's yeah. The, yeah, that the, was a disaster. That was a disaster, I tell you. <laughs> All I could do in that engine was move around and look at that beautiful stuff in there. <laughs> like CryEngine, like you have played Crisis, right? Yeah, Crisis yeah. 2 and 3 yeah. Yeah, that 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 view, like that view, that environment was so good, and I thought unbelievable. I thought I hope I just hope I could make something like this. Yeah. It just, <laughs> so, uh, but you That's have true. made some, or you already have made uh, even your recent that uh, artillery game was excellent, like excellent. Oh, thanks, man. But the uh, the arts credit that really goes to people from my team at Bofor Buddies and to Epic Games for the Paragon Pack from which I extracted all the particle effects. But you, you have you did the back end, right? You have programmed it all, all the stuff, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I, I just brought them all together. Stitching. And I actually showed it to my other friends and I told him, look, this is the person that I am going to talk about his life. And they were like, whoa, you might like, you might be a very like, what can I say that I don't know the word. Like they just think I am not ready to take the interview. Like the people like you, because oh, man, I no, have you, you, done <laughs> a lot of things that I just wish to do. So oh man, once you come here, I would say you'd be pretty much similar. People would want to interview you. <laughs> yeah. No. You're so, so interesting. You'd never want to stop. What? I can't. I couldn't hear you. 
Yeah, I said this field is so interesting. Whatever work you're doing, you never want to stop. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you always go for the perfection line and then you never find it. So you keep working at it day and night. It, it's not even boring. So I can't even complain. So um, much fun. You are in this University of Utah uh, and you are doing for like one and a half years right now? Uh, no, it's been like uh, seven months, I guess. Yeah. Seven months. All right. Uh, so have you ever felt stressed? Because I know this is your passion. But have you ever felt stressed doing this? Like, obviously, you get tired and you get all the uh, teaching assistant stuff. Then you have to do your stuff, you, your projects. Have you ever uh, felt stressed that, oh, my God, I just feel so stressed. I just need a break. Mm. Yeah, there were a few times when I got overwhelmed by the amount of work I had. But uh, I kind of, uh, you know, I really want to be a 100% game development thing. So I had this teaching assistantship, like from this semester, I can't really complain about semester one. I was like all out game development. That wasn't really tiring at all. But now I have to like divide attention, do some work over here. Uh, it's for TA and then my C++ assignments. And then, yeah, my favorite stuff, the guns you saw on the video. So, yeah, uh, g game I've, I've as seen your channel. Actually, I'm one of your subscribers, um, David. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, I was really amazed. Like, how can you make all this stuff in such a short time? Like, in seven months, all these games in just seven months? It's out of my, out of my oh, oh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't really seven months. It was seven months plus uh, I took a year's break after undergrad. So in that one year, I tried to learn as much as I can about Unity and Unreal. And in that time, yeah, uh, that wasn't really like a complete one year because in the start, I was more into like general app programming and I had developed this cryptocurrency arbitrage app with my friend. That was good stuff, but yeah, as you know, it's if it's not game development, it's it's not fun for me. <laughs> because uh, like uh, I think like it actually what's happening for me is right now uh, whenever I do some programming, like uh, recently I was making a self-driving car using the non non artificial intelligence approach like PID controller, and uh, I just didn't have any like motivation to go through because uh, there's no reason but when i am making a game a story is going on my head and i'm just having a reason so i guess that might be the thing that's going for you as well right i would say exactly i can describe this feeling because i've made simulations too uh, two of them i would say one was reinforcement learning which i did right after my undergrad after i learned unreal engine a bit and the other was genetic vehicle drift, which was kind of my favorite till that, uh, you know, till I got to University of Utah. That was, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I also did the same thing. I didn't want to go look for plugins that helped me make a tree, like uh, not a tree, it's the neural network to just throw in some inputs and it will learn on its own. No, I, uh, I had learned some, uh, neural networks in my undergrad and final year so I thought I could put up some uses of it. I tried to make it as general as possible but I finally had to hard code it to make it a three-layer uh, neural network and yeah that thing uh, as you can see it's not really perfect but uh, you could see some rare individuals popping up who could like really go past half of the track and drift through corners that looks really cool all right so i have to be 100 percent honest the lots of things you have said has gone over my head because i just don't <laughs> know anything about this neural network thing honestly okay although i'm in okay. final final year and i think i should know but i don't <laughs> because i have not done yeah. anything about that so i don't know but the okay. thing is like we have uh you have talked about a lot about like what you have done right now but i just want to uh go in a little little bit personal like uh, oh, when you okay. were in 2016 17 
mm. and uh, you were learning that unity and unreal stuff like why you have even started like why game development that could be in cyber security that could be in uh, robotics mm. that could be in artificial intelligence like why you have started have you ever imagined data moving no actually i haven't okay because uh, yeah it's uh, i wouldn't say it's a gift or anything but yeah it, it, no it's not a gift if it, it's a feeling you know when you uh, feel data is moving it means you can see what the output's going to be how it's changing in time in other parts of computer science you never really see it you have to write code I, uh, I guess I, I know what you are talking about and i can relate to that that when that was the first yeah. thing that happened to me uh, i actually when i saw my first game uh, when i actually saw the output of my first game the roller ball game i actually saw what i did i actually saw the inputs yeah. and i am giving the input and the ball is rolling the ball is having collision collision so it other uh, stuff and it actually fascinates me like i have done this yeah. and it, this is actually li live yeah it, it feels like uh, i mean it's a good feeling right it feels like a uh, matrix when you can uh, feel the numbers going like john uh, like the matrix right yeah, yeah. Uh, matrix matrix so, yeah <laughs> you see a movie yeah. a lot right no i don't like to watch a lot of movies but some of them really yeah really so, have, yeah. what do you do in your past time i play soccer and i play like yeah for now virtual or real no not virtual real oh you love soccer so which position do you play i like to play more of in the left flank or in the center ah uh, yeah. or <laughs> i'm not really that good <laughs> yeah. i am a, i am a really big fan of soccer and uh, actually i am also a footballer but i had to stop a couple of years back because my hamstring got affected so kind oh, okay. of kind of a bad memory but it happens yeah. oh, it happens yeah. a lot of money actually uh, i can very much relate to that i just yeah. tore in a bit your room so stand on google uh what there are other people in your room right oh yeah I i'm at my cousin's place so yeah they, they... all right um so uh, like the thing i was saying uh, like uh, the first thing that motivates you is uh, you the first time you saw the data moving and it's just yeah. changing and you and actually you have done this that actually motivates you so uh, like for me it was the same thing exactly the same thing because i have done uh like i was a general manager of a media company i was done i have done digital media marketing i have done real estate brokery it wasn't fascinating to me at all so um so when the when i came to uh, game development it was really fascinating but have you ever thought about like uh, like have you ever stopped from game development and done something else hmm. no i've never stopped ever since i started game development that was all i had in mind all right uh, so uh, when have you like why have you even uh, like thought about having a masters because uh, the person like you and the experience you have you might go to directly to big companies like why masters hmm i think it's more about uh, like a team game Uh, game development is more of a team game just like any other programming task right so you need to be a part of big uh, like if you talk about being a part of a big company then obviously you work on something small and that small work by a lot of people contributes to the big product so i believe in 2018 when i uh, finished my undergrad yeah i wasn't like really sure on how like what exactly makes a game what's the process uh you know like it's not really clear that uh, the secrets not out there you know how games are made they don't tell you that they just give you an overview on how to do it so i wanted to learn all that and like uh like if you just set out making a game you're not really sure how your workflow should be or what you should be doing first 
So yeah, that stuff really matters. So if you don't know that, you will be spending a lot of time learning. And if you're a programmer like me, then you'd spend a whole lot of time correcting your code and making it more organized so you can work further. That really takes up a lot of your time. So I wanted to like uh, get something that really gives me a grip on the workflow, you know? True, true, so, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, so, and uh, I've heard University of Utah had this uh, rapid prototyping program, which I have really loved from the very beginning. I read the description. So you put in teams of five and six, and then you have to like complete like about uh, five or six prototypes in span of one semester. That one was really fun. So you had to really work together as a team. Uh, like as an individual, you won't be making any games fast or as good as the other teams. If you're a lone lone player, right? Yeah, that was a good experience. True. Like, uh, like uh, I have to say, like uh, the things that are coming from you, and I'm just imagining like myself doing this, and I actually am feeling so grateful that I have chose the right decision because uh, either if I wanted to pursue my journey in game development, either I have to uh, like go to a company and learn and go for a master's or learn because that's the two options or I have to just sit home and learn all by myself where all these great programs like Utah and other colleges are doing absolutely great programs are there. So I'm actually having feeling very grateful that I'm choosing this option and this is coming from you so you have already been through what i'm i might go into i might go through that. yeah i believe it's pretty similar so yeah there's one more thing i wanted to add like you said working on a company versus working uh like trying to learn something being at a master's university so the thing is in master's university i believe you are free to choose whatever uh whatever part or section of game development that you want to get into. And then you can find your sweet spot that really like, you can work without getting tired. It's like it's so much fun. You're so curious that you still want to keep going at it. That's the kind of stuff you're looking for when you're in a master's program. Whereas in a company, you're, uh, I believe they, uh, like, they treat you as a gear of a big system so they're finding a spot to put you in so it's not really your favorite spot because you don't know where you would be fitting perfectly unless you try a whole lot of stuff so yeah this thing would give you that chance so uh, so uh, so this is a big big like journey to explore myself and find yeah. what i love right yeah all right so uh, like coming to this point so i have uh, just thinking about it like what are the like what are the genres or categories in this game development like you have stated that graphics programmer like gameplay programmer so what others are like that mm, uh, i mostly uh, you know when i really got into university of utah i wasn't really sure if i wanted to be a graphics person which was what i loved versus a gameplay person which was like, I was good at it. So that was a confusing time. And you, UOU has this, uh, like ha, uh, has game development divided into four sectors, artists, uh, technical artists, engineers, and producers. So yeah, producers was one thing I really wasn't like going into, but technical arts really caught my eye because they dealt with all of the graphic stuff, shader programming, materials, dynamic, Everything you see on screen, it's there doing. I mean, the art obviously is made by artists, pure artists, but effects, particles, explosions, whatever that makes the game fancy, it's made by tech arts. Yeah, I really love that stuff, but I believe at the end you have to just choose one. So I pick engineer. So yeah, in engineering, uh, I can have you ever like have you like uh, decided like which part you are going like graphics or gameplay yeah i had that very same confusion before i landed here uh, i wanted to be more of a graphics guy and i had read that in semester three or two you get this open gl uh, 
programming i guess full uh, syllabus for the semester but uh, i thought like yeah since i'll be doing open gl in, and uh, engineering one two three is more of a uh, like game engine programming stuff so i thought we'd be dealing with rendering and graphics but yeah that really wasn't the thing you deal with more of the underlying stuff that makes a game rather than what the games look so yeah All right. so so you like the you are exact in, like engineer person like who wants to be the back end of the system holds the system from the core and the, and other will uh, does the work who, which is actually coming from you like you are will be at the very back end of the whole system right yeah it's a choice uh, i think engineers have a lot of flexibility because if you say engine programming there's still a whole lot of stuff up here and gameplay is like over here and then whatever overlays there like technical arts and shaders and stuff it's over here so what you see what you play is over here so there's a whole lot of stuff that you have in uh, like core engineering stuff and i'd say the first thing you have heard of in game engineering is the term memory management have you you must have read about it i have heard that uh, actually uh, actually i was uh, actually i was re reading the book from uh, jason gregory uh, the game engine architecture and uh, that was there but i didn't like understood a single line honestly okay well it, i think uh, that one too is more of a choice so you could either be a standards person and read a lot of books and know a lot of techniques on how to really make a, a memory manager if we're talking about sem one's memory management course then uh, i'd say yeah that's one way to go or the second is you keep experimenting and trying to like uh, ponder through what can be the opt optimal solution so i was more of the type 2 person i didn't really read a lot of books or All right. i'd say i didn't i didn't I, even read the one recommended uh, game engine architecture game engine architecture yeah. i get that was the name yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was the finding <laughs> lots of similarities between us. Like, actually, I am the second kind of person because I honestly just don't like to read books over and over, and yeah. then copying it rather than I will spend ten hours my ten hours of my day just doing and failing again and again, but learn by doing. That's yeah. all point. Same, and for the memory manager, I'd say the fourth assignment that was kind of my breakthrough. That was when I felt like, yeah, this is really what I came here for, because that was when uh, me the memory management system really divided into like how you implement it. So uh, I had a few friends who really wanted to push themselves, so they went with a tree structure instead of a linear memory manager like block by block thing it's uh it's a whole lot of details like if you have time we can go over it but yeah in general it's like uh if you want to keep it simple or if you want to keep it optimized it's all up to you and then uh there's i remember for memory manager i just sat around for two days like this and just thinking about like imagining how different nodes would be in in the manager system you, you basically have this whole block this size of this screen and then i would just try to imagine what kind of rectangles there would be in which i would be storing my data and metadata so yeah that all was right. fun stuff that was so, when everyone's everyone's again, memory going manager. all over my head but <laughs> actually i'm loving this because the most of the time in my whole engineering career i am spending time with the stuff i don't know about and that's the that's that's really fascinating for me like i if i don't know about something i can learn a lot about that so actually that's what i'm doing right now but unfortunately i can't see you right now because uh, the my camera is here and my screen is right now like you are oh, here okay <laughs> and then my Got camera it. the camera is right right now so i'm just seeing oh. you right so i can't see you while <laughs> uh, i'm funny. this but when i will uh, when this will end i will again see the whole episode first to last 
and then I will see the whole thing you have done. Well, uh, and I would say you're just like me, type two engineers, you know, uh, we just like to sit and think about 10 different solutions and then try to find the optimal one. And then we find, oh, there's more stuff in there that we can optimize. And it's just a big loop. And we find ourselves like working on it way hard as opposed to people who just absolutely read books. True, absolutely true. They Actually, read that, books, that, that, they find the optimal solution written in there. They just implement it. There's no, there's not a lot of thinking involved. All right. Um, Recently, I got to take an interview of Mr. Vishal Naidu, who is an uh, master's candidate at University of Utah uh, in game engineering track and the game you are looking at right now is the game he has created and he is the gameplay engineer of this game this game is called alternate control where you can uh, you can con alternate the controller between two players and have the enemy i will post the link down below to see the full trailer and let's see what vishal has to tell let's go Just one out of the track question. Am I clearly audible to you? Yeah. All right. So uh, actually, that that was really right. Uh, I really love to do a like ten things and then find out a really optimal solution. Then doing a one thing and just tell it like this is the right thing. I just don't like it. Yeah. So uh, like uh, actually, I'm going to say a seriously funny and embarrassing story about this like uh okay. one day uh, one of my friends asked me why are you single so uh, and that was the day that was the day i had my uh, algorithm exam so i answered oh. like this way uh, i answered like uh, you are following the greedy method for finding girls and i am following the dynamic <laughs> approach yeah it's really funny most people won't get that joke <laughs> the, yeah, most people most people won't get yeah. so for them uh, just like to explain this a greedy method is to find the one and get uh, get it uh, and like step by step approach and the uh, dynamic method is find the best out of our whole series that's the thing uh, yeah so, uh, getting <laughs> getting to know about like all the jargons that we use like you said it's all a bouncer and it's just like one small leap ahead so it's just like di like jumping into a swimming pool with cold water so for first first few seconds you'll feel cold you'll shiver but then you really know what's underneath there it's nothing you can swim easy true, true. um so uh, there is a lots of like uh, i'm really uh, like really interested like there's a lots of stuff and i really don't know about this graphics programming because uh, Honestly, there's no tutorial about this in YouTube, and I have yeah, find that's true. I haven't found anything. Like I have found one thing. Like in engine programming, there's a, a guy called Sharno, and uh, he was doing this engine programming. Uh, so I heard about that engine programming. I heard about that uh, AI programming, like uh, that Go and FSM, like goal-oriented action planning, and FSM. I forgot the name, full name of FSM. I, I, finite I, state I, machines. You are fine, right? Finite state uh, machines, right? Finite state machines. So you have mentioned this finite state machines uh, in one of our chats. Like uh, you wanted to join Ubisoft because they have this good animation. Uh, like what? What was that? Like I don't really get it. Like if you could really okay. explain. Okay. Uh, it's more feeling. If you play Assassin's Creed, uh, let's say Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Uh, I've, I've played that. If you played it? Did yeah, you like it? I have it? played Ascan Unity, Black Flag, uh, oh, except stuff, Odyssey, man. I have played all of the things. Okay, so yeah, if you uh, like really try to like have an eye on how the player moves on the land as opposed to when jumping or grabbing ledges and stuff, which I think there's still more stuff to improve there. But yeah. If you observe a, a character moving on screen, uh, do you really find that there's some kind of inconsistency in how they're moving in Assassin's Creed? No, no. yeah, because Ubisoft does it so cleanly. You, it's, it's like very rare a case that you'll find 
some sort of inconsistency in how people or things are animated in there. Very rarely that stuff happens when like there's a stab animation going wrong and or when like uh, like when you do a leap of faith. Uh, I know in oh, all yeah. Assassin's Creed games the animation runs good, but then you fall off not in a straight line but like this. Yeah, those are just like programmatically getting the person to do a leap of faith. But yeah, uh, why I mentioned finite state machines in there was because like if you uh, do you know what a skeleton is for uh, like a rigged character? Okay, it's just like so if you yeah, take this I, one, I it's like I one know, bone. Like I've seen uh, like seen other developers doing that, like rigging and all of those things, like having the skeletons doing all the stuff, like. That was the thing I was uh, I have seen that, but actually I don't know how that works. Really. Oh, okay. So it's just a like set of bones you place in Maya or some sort of similar uh, program or tool, and then in game if you say you want to move this bone or rotate it like this, it would move. Yeah, and people make all sorts of animations in Maya and like stuff like that. And then yeah, what I want to say is there's for example, there's one clip for running where the player is going like this or in place like this, and there's one clip for jumping like this. So yeah, a finite state machine controls what animation is played when. And animation blueprinting, as I said, is it's more of a control on what state machine plays on which part of the character and how they are like blended. So in Counter-Strike, old Counter-Strike games, you'd see them walking in different directions, but the body's still facing the same way. True. So, so yeah, that's like playing different animations on different bones, like one for the lower half of the body and one for the upper half of the body, two state machines, things like that. Mm. Actually, yeah, I'm that, that's really interesting. Uh, very uh, odd question. Uh, is this all this animations uh, even uh, related to this human anatomy and anything? Well, yeah, most humanoid structures are based on human skeleton, but not like one to one. And or yeah, uh, I wouldn't say it's like really. Hmm. I'm not really sure. I, maybe I'm not the right person to ask, ask about this because it's more of a rigging person's question. All right. So actually, uh, this is the uh, this is a very uh, new things for me. And actually, as I was say, I have said yesterday, I'm uh, really a noob, and you can tell that, obviously. Uh, it's but uh, this is a matter is of how much things you've seen. Uh, I I took interest in these things. I mean, there's a whole lot of things in there that you can learn. Maybe you will be an expert in AI programming. I don't know. I'm just waiting for you to come here. Let's find out. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's true. Um, like uh, in this, like you have known a lot of a lot about this graphics and this animations and uh, gameplay programmers. So uh, actually, I'm going to ask you a few specific questions that might help the viewers to. Obviously, the the viewers of this video. Uh, obviously will be at least interested in game development or animation or something mm. like that. So uh, you have done a lot of programming in C++, right? Mm, yeah, like not entirely. C++, some in C Sharp Unity and some in Blueprints, Unreal. So uh, um, like there's a very, very misconception about in this game development. Like uh, when I, st I was starting, uh, there was a choice that I either have to learn C++ or I have to learn C Sharp. So if I learn C++, I am going to Unreal Engine. And I, if I learn C Sharp, I am going to Unity. So I choose uh, Unreal Engine. That's why I was learning C++. So uh, like, obviously, you have, you have uh, gone through this kind of uh, stuff, right? So uh, what do you think about what, which um, programming language takes more precedence in game industry like C++ or C sharp or it's kind of a mixture of both. Hmm, I have very different views. I might be wrong somewhere, but I don't like to see it as different languages. Uh, as I said, like to make things move. 
So you can do that in any programming language. It's just that some languages give you more features to work with. C++ is more like, C++ is more like, a, uh, I would say an old Nissan Skyline GTR, Godzilla. You can swap almost everything in there, just like a tuner. Yeah, you can swap rims to make it look good, have new spoilers in there, put in a new engine maybe new air intake manifold, all, all that stuff is so customizable. And some languages like C Sharp like to guide you because they have a lot of rules and they're very safe to work with. So yeah, uh, I don't really like to differentiate them. It's more like uh, if you learn to adapt between different programming languages, you'd say it's just algorithms and logic. It's not two different programming languages. Right. You as a programmer have to fit in every every scenario thrown at you. All right. So uh, actually, this is the kind of answer actually I was hoping for. Like, uh, actually, this is the kind of answer uh, will put an end to this question. Like, I have seen like game dev uh, forums and YouTubes and lots of YouTubers are doing the same questions. Like, I have okay. seen lots of programmers say Unity or Unreal, C Sharp or C++. I've, I've seen a lot of videos never found a definitive answer this is the first time i'm having an answer that actually uh, like fulfills me like as an engineer i don't like to like bound it by a language yeah. so that's a real that's a really good answer man thank you so much oh, thanks man like this this video actually will ha have lot more values to all a lot of people i ha i'm have to say uh, that's really cool man. glad it helps yeah so um so the next question will uh, will be like uh, it's gone from c sharp versus c++ uh, so you have said that it's not about language so uh, if a totally new person who have actually it's not new actually it's a newbie uh, actually if it's a, a really beginner who wants to learn uh, in a to make a game so where should he or she could start like mm. from where like a, just make a game or read something from where that's a really good question so yeah uh, that depends on what the person has in mind when it comes to game development so for for me the first thing that came to my mind was something that moves and something that has fixed logic like an endless runner so it's easy to program so i would learn how uh, how small games work so i really knew what i wanted in there because if i get into unreal with that intent it's just like getting into photoshop or maya in the very first attempt you never really know what's in there there's a whole lot of stuff thrown at you so unity is very good for beginners i would say because it's it's got simple structure and it allows you to make whatever you want from scratch. Unreal tries to guide you because it knows it's made for like really big things, really big things. A lot of people working together. So yeah, Unity is more of a tuner perspective, just like the Skyline GTR I said about. So yeah, in Unity, you're building your own bricks and you're building your own building. True, true, true. Actually, one of my friends, actually, uh, actually, uh, he's not currently now not my friend anymore. But yeah, actually, one of my uh, past friend is currently now working in Unity, Unity Technologies India, as, as a field engineer and a Unity ambassador. And uh, he actually, he actually uh, helped me starting with his game development. Actually, he did a workshop in our college and in, in our university, and I was there. I learned from him and I went home and I just went to uh, Uni's learning page and I learned that rollerball game. So it was really, really helpful for me. Like that camera controller, the movement controller, the whole world, like how to make a world, how to make collision detections, how to make score detections. That was really, that was a very small game, but that, that was a really great start. Yeah.
I mean, in Unity, you'd be setting up your own camera controller and stuff. Uh, Unreal does most of that stuff for you, so you don't really know what's happening behind. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it already have that templates, like the endless runner template, FPS template, all that templates yeah. already there. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, uh, so, so the, the end of the end line is that if a, if a actual beginner, actually I'm talking about an engineer, like I don't know about what a person in arts or producer could do. I don't know about that. But if an engineer wants to start in this uh, game development field, so he or she should start with Unity and make something that moves, had some logics and right, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you uh, something interesting. So yeah, the first thing I started with to learn how Unity, how to make a game in Unity was I started with Flappy Bird in Unity tutorial under 40 minutes or something. All right, so, so that's yeah. Flappy Bird. You have to click and that, that kind of the game uh, I we all used to have in the old Android mobiles. Yeah, the one where you tap uh, was there Android six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Would pop I, 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 mean, I just never won that game ever, ever. <laughs> well, you never win it. <laughs> I am. You not. don't even compare it with friends. It doesn't even save. <laughs> I think it saves the scores, but you, it's just for a year. So it's you have made the time. Flappy Birds game. Um. So uh, you have started with Flappy Bird, right? Yeah. So uh, from where did you learn? Like, did you go into YouTube? You went to yeah. YouTube. YouTube was the first thing I did was download a book for Unity. I'm not really a book person. I started reading through it. I got bored and I really couldn't follow <laughs> what the book wanted to say about how you should be starting with Unity. Yeah, so I just went straight up into. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I just. Uh, I'm more of like a person who dives first and explores later. Yeah, I believe that approach is a lot more fun. And then you can see a lot of things in that process. So oh, yeah, right. uh, Flappy Bird, because mm, I had this image in my mind that, uh, you know, those uh, repetitive or like uh, endless runner games, they have some kind of repeating pattern. That's why you don't see the game ending. Because if it's a story-based game, you'd have to do some kind of level design maybe place a whole lot of stuff in there for the player to move around. So yeah, somehow I had this idea that I really want to make repeating stuff first because it's easy and it's not a lot of hard work. So that's why I wanted to make flappy birds. Then I understood how like all the pipes that go away from the screen, you really spawn them back to save memory and stuff. And then you use two sheets of backgrounds to just like loop through and stuff to make it feel like it's one big background moving in parallax. So yeah, th those were like small stuff, which really helped me understand how games really work. Game is just an illusion. All right. Um, so uh, as we are in this, uh, like talk about this uh, repeating stuff, I just, I would like to show you something. Uh, actually, I, I will uh, doing the screen share right now. Uh, okay. I guess you are in your laptop, right? Yeah. So I will, I will actually show you the game I have made. Uh, I will just show you. Let's go. Uh, wait, uh, just one second. Uh, animation uh, courses, uh, game development. Yeah. C++ games, Timber Bash, Timber Bash. Yeah, that this is right here. So actually I'm going to share the screen right now. Uh, so sh this is the, uh, this is the screen. I hope you uh, can see this. Yeah. Um, you can see this uh, screen, right? <laughs> yeah, everything's so big. Uh, all right. So this is uh, this is the game I have made. Hmm. You can see this, right? Oh, I don't see the game console window. Uh, you can see the game console you in window, or you you cannot see the game. I guess. Um, mm, I don't see it. Oh, all right. So just uh, let me show you the video I had. Um, where's the video? Mm, no, Maya animation sequences. Yeah, uh, there is. 
actually i made this game oh acha um just this resume share all right wait a minute just wait a minute yeah here it is so i actually made this game um that actually kind of resembles flappy bird but it's kind of procedural branch generation what oh yeah oh yeah i've seen this one this is good actually yeah. it's a, it's it's, it. it's a um, android game called timber and actually i wanted okay. to clone it hmm this is good stuff so you just alter around when the branches try to hit you <laughs> but it's it's the simple thing i have made and this is this whole thing i have made by myself uh actually i read some uh, like what can i say some uh youtube tutorials and uh, some like google forums and i've just made that and all the artworks i made by myself and actually oh, i'm really, really proud cool. of that <laughs> okay what did you make it in the artwork uh, it it was uh, first it was in c++ and then it was sfml library and that's all okay uh, i remember all the 2d uh, unity games that i made all of them all the art came from paint 3d <laughs> it, it was really it was really <laughs> fun for me actually i did it I that was good stuff open right? any kind of engine before uh, i had a substantial amount of c++ knowledge uh, and i still don't have that kind of knowledge but i can uh, do a little well than i was doing it before so it kind of helped great so uh, coming back to the questions uh, okay. so actually i have prom- i have promised that i will dive in a little bit personal so i am going a little bit personal uh, so uh, when you were in the undergrad uh, so when you had told your parents that i am going to pursue masters in game development uh, what was the reaction like what was your friends reaction and what others were telling you that why are you even doing this or they have supported you what was like that well my parents i would say they got pretty happy yeah because they've been seeing me play games and like delve into graphical stuff for all these years and i believe they had this idea that if i go into that i'd be i'd be having a whole lot of fun because i i told them i didn't have a lot of fun when i interned at credit suisse because uh, general programming was really not my thing my friends yeah some of them were very about it because uh they, uh yeah from over here in like not here so when i was in mumbai i don't really know what was going on out in the game development world or if i joined a masters university i didn't know what the outcome was so i started uh finding people on linkedin future seniors stuff so yeah my friends some of them liked the idea some of them didn't some of them told me yeah uh, i think it would be really difficult to find jobs in there because most of them i see are computer science jobs but game development is like a really small part of computer science so that's like low probability right why do you want to go there i said i love it that's why some right. friends like like yeah they said oh, yeah i think you really love it so i believe you do great in there so yeah, i had moral support from my best friend and my parents it turned out great true, true, true. like uh, did you have any kind of uh, like uh, what can i say did anyone have ever uh, stopped you or like uh, they have kind of like negative about the things you have you are doing it like ever did that ever happen to you hmm. negative uh, no, i'm not really sure never had any negative feedback about what i want to do i I've, uh, i've heard this phrase a lot you love uh, you do what you're loving or you're going to do what you love so yeah that that was how i remember it i don't remember anyone having negative or neutral feedback about it. except in the job terms of course true true i'd say the first thing that got me uh, really excited about game development is that 
in India, uh, there's a whole lot of people. Uh, the market for mobile apps is like really big. Really big. So right. if you, yeah. So if you get in there, out of all the, out of all the competition, then you'd find the sweet spot and you'd be working on games you love your whole life. Probably not the case when you're working jobs all your life in some other country. True. So, uh, like, uh, do you like uh, making games professionally for a company, or do you like to make indie games? Like, which one is your indie. sweet? Indie. Yeah, I'd say indie is fun because you get to learn a lot, and yeah, if you have a good team, then you really like learn the teamwork. And then you get to know what happens after you finish the game. Uh, I remember uh, my favorite game, I would say, is the game Bonds. Have you tried playing it? Uh, game Pong. Bonds. Bots. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, it's a chemistry game which I started two months before I left for the US. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, finished it, I right? kind of had this uh what you have finished it right yeah i did finish it two months two months that that was a lot of time for the first 15 days i was just going around town like uh, meeting different professors and asking them what really makes a pattern of all the chemistry stuff in there because yeah at that uh some point of time i had this weird idea that chemistry had a, has a whole lot of combinations in there and we could probably make a game in there. And what motivated me more was that the idea that if I made this game, it's quite probable that I could sell it to maybe schools, institutions, or maybe have some kind of, you know, merger. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the terms. I'm not really on the producer or marketing side, but you know, like the feeling you get when you think, yeah. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot of people who can buy it's bigger because... you are doing it for bigger prospective like you are doing it for others like to help others so help other children to have like good grasp in chemistry or like that something like that right yeah that was one of the motives yeah of course so that, uh, like get, <laughs> getting a whole lot of user base that was my primary motive but the kind of game i made was like yeah it was an educational game so yeah that comes along uh, all right. So uh, you have said you love indie games. So which kind of like which kind of games you love to make? Hmm. I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> uh, th there's a bunch of stuff I've made that really. No, don't you don't have. Pattern. You have to pick uh, a single thing. You can tell a lot of lots of stuff. Like uh, if you take the the stuffs you don't like and. The cut it out from the whole whole stuff and you will get the stuffs you like so just tell us like which kind of game you like to make. like to make like i really like to make because i have made one action game so i really like to make story types games that's kind of a that's kind of a my thing so which kind of games you like uh okay uh this is not really specific, but I would say I like to make games that really stand out. Uh, Bonds, I think was one of them. I think I might have one more game coming in called uh, Dark is the Way, which was kind of like a uh, one week prototype that I had to do for the experimental games class. Have you, if you've seen that video, it's just a ball roll game, but it's like completely in the dark, pitch black, and then the game idea is that you have a flashlight attached to the ball. So whatever you see is real. Whatever you, you don't see is not real. So to go past a wall, you just have to look away and go through. Yeah, there's a video up there that you can see. It's, it's pretty interesting. My friends uh, let's just have loved the idea. They said that everyone can see it because they, it's actually recording right now live. So let's see that. Okay. Um, yeah, let me share the link for you. Yeah, I have it in LinkedIn. It's an old post, I think from a month ago. 
actually uh, i have i guess i have that debian uh, debian one channel yeah. yeah actually it's on like there is a, the dark is the way that's the game yeah dark is the way that's the one oh, all right so uh, just let me just share the screen okay so yeah, Bonds was one game where uh, I thought I could put in a whole lot of levels. So, people so this is the this lot of is your uh, like channel, and I will absolutely like to tell everyone to go to your channel and find this all of this awesome stuff because this is really great. If you're if, and if you are an engineer or a technical guy like us, you will find this fascinating. Oh, thanks a lot, Vanda. <laughs> so uh, just let's see this. Uh, the net connection is kind of slow, but yeah, it yeah, is. I heard there's a 480p limit on video streaming these days. Uh, this is the game, right? Yeah. Wow, man, that's really cool. <laughs> oh, <man, you> don't. <laughs> this is this is not really cool. You, you don't see a lot of stuff in there. Is the video smooth? Yeah. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it's more of a platformer. I really have a hard time thinking of a control scheme for this. I want to make this a mobile game. This, this, all this artworks are made by you. Oh, that's not really artwork. That's cubes. All right. Cubes and default material in Unity. <laughs> and this is made in Unity, obviously. There's written that it's Unity. Mm. Cool, cool. Absolutely cool. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I have, I have made a whole lot of levels. Like, I guess ten more levels after that in my experimental games class. I didn't put a video up for those. But yeah, it'll be cool to see further progress in that game. Right. You, you, have you watched Boku no Hero Academia? No, which what? The anime, uh, My Hero Academia. Uh, My Hero Academia. I have to say, I really want to see all this anime because I have seen just three or four animes. Like those are my favorites, like Inazuma Eleven, Detective Conan, okay. uh, Code Geass, uh, Death Note. These are all my favorites. But I just don't. I'm just not having the time to see a single series right now because all this, okay. like this, this interview is a part of my uh, digital marketing like thing okay. because I want to share That's the cool. story of all these people. And then okay. I have this uh, game <laughs> week. So it's really hard for me right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, uh, I don't watch a lot of anime, but I would say I'm glad I watched this one because there's this main character. Uh, no, not a main character, an entree somewhere called Lemillion. He just glitches through the floor, like he disables collisions and then pops back up when his collisions are enabled back on. And I thought, yeah, I could use that as an idea in my game. Using a uh, like, have you like uh, made uh, like yeah. I don't know uh, how have you made, but I just guess like you have made some kind of randomness of this collisions. Yeah. Like I have seen uh, those balls. One time it was hitting the wall, and one time the wall was there, but it's actually not a rigid one. Oh yeah, that, that was like uh, you produce a cone like this, and if you look away, I'm just disabling collisions on whatever's like in front of you or all right so the, the there's biggest, only collisions for those things that come under the cone all right so the, the biggest thing i have currently worked on right now is all about that random functions i have made random functions like and make the games around that so even the game i have showed you that timber bash game all that mm -hmm. branches were randomly generated and that was a random function so it i have just cool. i just love randomness and that was Wait, a did game. you write your own random uh, number generator? 
uh, actually i tried and i did obviously i did but it wasn't truly random because it kind of a pseudo random and i just made a yeah, little that's too close <laughs> yeah uh, that uh, that's <laughs> really good stuff it. man that's that's innovation yeah thank you so much uh, and yeah, actually, you, you want to see more people trying stuff out of the blue or out of the ordinary like this because people like mostly they see like a random number generator as like they take it for granted they don't look past it or what it provides you no like, it, that's really good that's, that's, that that's you got the into opposite that. for me once i really know that once i didn't know anything about that all those libraries and i went there and the uh, like in the c uh, c uh, drive and i went there to find see the all those library what's in that std lib and conio and all those libraries and i i don't know how the one library whole library got deleted whole library got deleted so i have to uninstall all the stuff and start from the beginning <laughs> yeah and uh, i did that's I how you I up lot, that's lot. you have learn a lot of stuff right <laughs> So um, building them again. Actually, uh, one of my one of my like what can I say? He is not a friend. He is one of my mentors. Uh, actually, he is doing PhD right now in AI, and he is he has made his own uh, like own random number generator using the number of threads and the processes that goes around in this uh, like whatever we are doing right now in the computer. And he said these all are having this random and these numbers are really random. But what is actually happening right now in the random number generator? That's in C plus plus. It has a it has a problem. It goes sequentially, and that's mm -hmm. not really random. Like mm -hmm. I will get one and then get seven, but I might get something else if yeah. it was really random. If you talk about threads, I would say yeah, it's like really random. You you can never find or, or uh, like it's. Uh, did you have that part of chemistry where you have this probability formula for an electron revolving around yeah, um, yeah, yeah. the I core and it says the probability of finding an electron at this position, if that gets high, you don't really know the radius. And if you know the radius, you never really know where the electron is or something similar. Yeah, yeah, it's but, just like that. Uh, it resembles really know which one it yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that's Heisenberg's <laughs> Yeah, I forget the names. But yeah, yeah. actually, I say it's remember similar. because I was, I was, uh, I, I just saw a Breaking Bad uh, like clip, <laughs> and that was Heisenberg, and that's what I remember. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So yeah, you, you can't really predict which thread's going to hit you up next or, or one of your cores because there's like thousands more of them. So yeah, that's one really smart way of finding random. So he made uh, that like that, and he said to me like his university is making a random number generator based on number of photons that are coming from the sun per second oh. in a per, <laughs> uh, like area like uh, like a particular area, and the numbers of photons he is grading right now. So uh, it 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 really it really like really fascinating for me. Uh, so all right, uh, we are actually uh, getting diverted, and actually, if, uh, if we get started on this technical thing, I am absolutely sure that we will spend all our all our night. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, the, coming to the coming to your point, like you have done all these things, you have made this awesome awesome games, and you are in this University of Utah. So how this uh, this sudden change from India to Utah and all these new people. Like how this have changed you, like what you have got from them, like new people, new cultures, like how have you get from that? Mm. Well, I'd say I'm not really a very social person. I'm more of a nerd, but yeah, <laughs> it's really good to see people who think alike uh, after I came into University of Utah. So yeah, all, all really of them are nerd in their own way. <laughs> I would say I wouldn't say nerds, but yeah, uh, it's good to see people who have the same interests as you. you know, they want to see the game work, so it's not like if you talk about a game, you don't understand. Like people don't understand that that happens in India over here. People know more about games than you do. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, like, this. from which countries all are your friends from? Like I have I have noticed that you have American friends. Obviously, you are from India. Yeah. You have mm. uh, like uh, some people from China as well. Yeah. So what other countries? Like what other countries are there? Well, yeah, I just know these three. It's one friend from Cambodia. It's yeah, majority of the people are Americans, Indians, and Chinese. So yeah. All right. So that that there that's a, a great others. cultural change for you as well. Yeah. All right. Um. So again, uh, this cultural change all always have a like have a great impact from. like from where are we right now and where we will go that culture will have a great impact so uh, coming to the point uh, you have said that unity versus uh, unreal you have said c++ versus c sharp and other uh, like genres in this game developments uh, and we have already discussed with uh, like how a new comer will start in this year, like in this game development journey so uh, like how which kinds of games uh, do you prefer uh, like what what will happen if you go to an uh, like company and if you get a game to make which you don't like then then what will happen no there's no choice you have to make it yeah that's true like there's no yeah. choice right that's why you have all the fun when you can and so hope I, that it sticks i i, I or I, learn I, to I, love what you have <laughs> all right um so um that's true uh, so coming to the next question um just you you just have to tell us about your experiences and i will show the videos from your youtube channel and you have to tell us your experiences and like one of the best thing you have got learned from that game ready okay yeah sure let's go all right uh, let's start with my favorite then bonds all right um just let me share the screen this is i guess this is the game all right uh, so um wait a minute just wait a minute okay <laughs> the videos yeah your projects all right so uh, these are the game yeah so here is uh, this is your uh, project section uh, so which which game you will like to start from i'll start with bond since it's my favorite All right, so let's start from bonds. Okay, which which video did you hit? I think that's the trailer. Wow, that's that's okay. really great start. Hey, is it? <laughs> is this your video? You? <laughs> Thanks, man. This was more of like a two-player, uh, like two-man team. This this uh, video was made by my friend. All right, uh, so just let uh, let me. Uh, i have to maybe uh maybe i will have to stop the sound so we can hear your voice okay so yeah let's start from this uh, so what is your experience while building this okay well this was like one of the most like, i'd say a complete indie game that i've made yeah so i'm pretty glad the first thing i remember doing was like sitting around for five or six days with no game idea to make that felt worth so yeah i was just going around uh watching movies and stuff but yeah there was this one thing when i, I was looking for patterns like repetitive patterns as you see this game has a lot of repeating patterns in there so I just stumbled around this idea one of my friends I met recently who uh, uh just finished his chemical engineering so yeah somehow it hit me that chemistry has a whole lot of patterns in there that we could use so 
and obviously you like physics you like chemistry you and you are a pure uh, science no. person <laughs> I don't like chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's that's true for me. Like, that's that's really true for me as well. I actually I don't say I don't like it, but it's just not my thing, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. So. So, I, uh, uh, st- so which 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 one you want to see like like pre alpha or pre alpha part two? uh yeah uh, let's go with both of them one by one okay all right so a uh, pre alpha and then yeah. we'll go to part 2 hmm so yeah when i first thought about this game idea i thought like we uh, i had to make some kind of uh like an atomic structure that would be like a repeating pattern you could use that for all the elements you have in the table so yeah i just went around doing this uh, like you know the printing the circle and then all those uh, all those dots you see in there are just circles made in paint 3d and i just wow, learned that, a whole that, lot that's of cool. i have I have, yeah. I have not seen anything like made in this paint 3d <laughs> oh really <laughs> thanks so yeah uh, i i wanted to make that structure you know uh two electrons in the first shell eight electrons in the second shell eight electrons in the third shell and yeah, that, like that, that this was the rule uh, that was a rule uh, octave rule i guess yeah octet rule and uh, uh, it pretty much holds true only for elements till the i think third row or fourth row because after that the third shell has to have more electrons i think 16 to be stable uh, yeah I- yeah, I don't remember. 32, I guess that was 16. Yeah. Uh, 1, 8, some, 32. <laughs> yeah, it had something to do with those S, P, D, oh. and F uh, subshells or what they call it. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, uh, that was a zigzag pattern. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, uh, that's when I limited my game to be uh, a like three three orbit. Yeah, like you understand, right? So I, I limited myself to three orbits because I didn't want to complicate further. So I r- wrote this formula that if you add an electron, it just come flying by and grab the first orbit. And if you add a second one, it will re- get the same orbit. And third one would be in the next shell and stuff like that. And I used uh, sine and cos to make them uh, go around in circles. And Great. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Thanks, man. Like, uh, um, yeah, like so, I would, uh, if I were a student, I would play this game to learn chemistry. Absolutely, <laughs> for sure. Oh, thanks, man. Like I, oh, yeah, for the- <laughs> I don't like, I don't haven't, I didn't have anything like this in when I was studying chemistry. Wow. This wow. I'm glad you liked it. Actually, I, uh, if this were in a Play Store, I would like literally download it right now it's on play store it's on play store i will download it yeah, after this after this six... interview i will download it <laughs> it's got 6.25k downloads already 6.25k oh my god like that's yeah. the that's the maximum download i have heard from anyone like people like us obviously uh, really? there will a lot of companies who are making lots of lots of more downloads but it's a single person game right yeah pretty much it was a two-man game uh i made the game and i had a friend who really like worked hard to market it uh, i dedicated all the 6.25k downloads yeah. to him his name is bushin he's from my undergrad no, 11 12th all right so yeah. yeah that's 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 a really great point uh, if you don't market it you, you don't have like you yeah. have made money with it right well, Google has this policy. You can take your money out till it's hundred dollars or more. So it's just six dollars from ads now. All right. So, uh, but you have made this great impact in this. Uh, like people would like actually kids would love to like play this game. Only this game would people would love to play. So, so I'm having one prediction about you that you are a te- like you are a great science person like you really into science like physics 
and all this serious yeah. games. You're really into that, like maths and all this, right? Yeah, that's true. You're correct. <laughs> yeah, that that that's maybe that's why you love to be a graphics engineer because yeah, I could see the math in there. From the scratch. <laughs> yeah. True. So, uh, so yeah. let's let's see the next game once one minute. Yeah, there is one thing I wanted to mention about this game. The first ten days, or uh, I spent collecting data about what levels I could make. Me and my friend had this big Excel sheet divided into three forms, like ionic, covalent, and mixed. And we just kept putting in all the levels we could and all the like answers to. Like, if you get that Excel sheet, you'll finish that game in an hour. Yeah. So yeah, and I spent the next one month building the stuff in there, and the last fifteen days I would say went into making the whole of one hundred and eighteen levels. One hundred and eighteen levels. Have you ever well, like you have made every one from the scratch, or you have made some random like level builder thing? Oh yeah. Uh, when I said uh, spent one month, I was trying to build this kind of general uh, system where you could just drag a prefab it would be an atom and then you set its configuration like it would already have three electrons no charge it, its name would be na and stuff like that and then its valence c yeah so if you place two or three atoms in there uh, there would be this um, level script which would contain all the references to, for example, you would say A and B would react once exchange one electron, B and C would exchange two electrons. It had this whole map. So I had to do this hard work of mapping all the answers in all of the 118 levels. So it took me a whole lot of time, but I'm glad I made this pattern in that one month. That really helped bring down the time or I'd be making all the levels from scratch. And all of this you did uh, like, like when was the gap year after your undergraduate or that yeah. was the college days? This was during the break I had and it was almost at the end of it when I had confirmed my application in University of Utah and I was looking for something to do till I had my flight. So it was kind of like uh, the, like maybe from December to February time like time that was Mm, yeah, I think it was around March. March. I don't remember dates. I'm not good with dates. Yeah, I actually, I uh, just had a hunch. Uh, so, which game you want to see next? Uh, yeah, I'd say Paragon Twin Blast is interesting. The first uh, one. This one. Yeah. So I this was. Uh, Paragon yeah. Twin. Yeah. Uh, this wasn't a game. This was just. Uh, uh, like right. uh, Epic Games released their Paragon pack and they had like 10 different characters in there with all the animation and character assets and no blueprints whatsoever. So uh, I spent about 11 days on this character trying to make him alive, like play all the animations in harmony and play all the particle effects given in there for shooting different guns. Let's see the game, right? So uh, this was one of your, uh, this was the game when you were in Utah, right? Oh, bad net connection. Hello. Yeah, I just got disconnected. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I was screen sharing with this Paragon Twin Blast share. Yeah, this is the thing. You are seeing that right now, right? Yeah, the video uh, is a bit laggy, but yeah, I'm seeing it. Um, this is the same yeah. UI you have like used in that artillery game. Uh, the UI? 
No, I'm yeah. not really sure the UI is same. No, not really same, but uh, I have seen that uh, like uh, no, that was that was not right. That was not right. I actually, I have been, I have been mistaken. Actually, I was seeing this game and FX. I saw that the same thing right here, like two uh, FX, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, that's the same tag I used in my recent game. It's just uh, there's it's kind one of more folder called. Thing. It's a what? It's it's kind of had a neon feeling, like colors, neon type colors. Oh yeah, they had two folders in there. One had all these red effects and the other one was called summertime and had like this beach theme and blue neon looking particles. That was, yeah, I used that one for the cannons. Actually, I'm going to put all these games when I'm going to like this, uh, show this interview, like in the YouTube and all the other streaming platforms. I'll put all these game videos and I will, I will obviously download it from YouTube and I will put all these games so that people can see how great and how badass game developer you are. Oh, thanks a lot, man. I, I, I'd say there are a lot more people who are better than this, me. This animation, I just love this animation. But the animation's all given, man. You just have to, like, tell the computer when to play which one. All right, but still, it's look, it looks great. And I, I bet it looks a lot great if you put AI in this. NPCs yeah. will look great in this. Yeah, I had done that. This, uh, this project had like six, uh, I think four or five more characters like this one in there and a pack called Minions, which had like small, uh, I don't know, weird futuristic looking people that you could shoot at for NPCs. That was rough stuff. My hard drive crashed and yeah, I'm, I'll try to recover this game back. That, that project got to 65 GB because I imported a whole lot of Paragon assets in there. Five GB, oh my God. 65. Well, yeah, that that's too big. <laughs> it's just Paragon packs in there. <laughs> Five, oh four, three GBs, like tens of them. It's just <laughs> all right. Epic so, uh, marketplace was in that project. <laughs> actually, <laughs> what I do in when I uh, every month I go to marketplace and I just serve the buy free, all the free for month stuff, right? Yeah, I just want. I the do that too. <laughs> I just add to my cart and I don't, I just don't pay for it. I just add to my cart. I don't download it, but I just add, add it. <laughs> Same stuff, man. So, yeah. so uh, which one, which one is next? Uh, let's go with Astrolift. Astrolift. All right. So yeah, uh, that, yeah. these all games this, you have made was while amazing. you were in Utah? Yeah. Astrolift was when Utah began. All right. Wow. So, yeah, we, uh, we had to make this game in, uh, an engine called Monogame, which I think was more of a framework than engine. So you, it was so manual that you had to write all the logic yourself, even for like, even for when you see different, uh, like uh, you, you can see animations in there, right? It's, yeah. It's not really animations. It's, it's, I'm trying to alter images every frame. Wow, that's really great! Like, uh, yeah, it was so manual. This was fun. So this is is actually like you are changing uh, pictures, like images in every frame, right? Yeah. Wow. And so uh, you, is this uh, actually to... what this is game about? Like, what yeah, is the one... mission? Hmm. Okay. The objective, I'd say, uh, this should not be some kind of spoiler, but uh, when you get to University of Utah, you get this subject called uh, rapid prototyping, where you are, uh, uh, Mr. Langdon yeah, was telling. Me. Yeah, th that's one of the most interesting things you would find over here. So you're put into random teams of size five or six, and you have two weeks to make a game. Sometimes one week, sometimes three. And this was the first game I made. And they give you these kind of challenges on the very first day to excite you, make you think more into what kind of game it can turn out to be. So we had this weird elastic toy, a ninja, sticky ninja that you could throw and it would stick onto a wall. And you had to make game out of, uh, I don't know what, inspired by that. So 
uh, I thought it would be cool if we had some kind of tether. Right, I I had that toy. Like the two toys are connected with something, and yeah. those just uh, stick to the wall, and one just like falls yeah, down, and, and one goes down. up. Yeah, that 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 that's actually that was a very memorable uh, period in my life uh, because that one toy was given by my grandma, and uh, now she uh, is not. Yeah, like oh. not with us anymore. So oh. that was really that games really takes me back to those memories, and that's really great. <laughs> yeah. So I remember this was, oh, this was the first project I crunched in. You know, uh, I spent like uh, the last day of this project, right? Be- the last night, I'd say, right before presentation. I remember my whole team was there. Like every one of us were like. Oh man, did you finish that? Uh, I think the animation is not working. Oh, I th- we're still yet to put together the UI. Oh, come on, there's a whole lot of things left. And then we spent uh, like, w- we were there till 4 a.m. That's, that, that's, that's really, that's, that's just really like true thing for our engineers. Like I really can relate that when I can't like finish a project that I really care about, and it just I just can't sleep. I just really you can't sleep. You have this possessiveness, right? Yeah. You want to see it happen. You want to see it out in everyone's eyes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and when like I have found this uh, like immense joy when you are just doing it and trying it, and when everyone just lost hope that it won't work, and and something just clicked and it worked, and you are like, oh my god, what just happened? And that happened for me like n numbers of times. Yeah, man, that's that's the feeling I crave. Yeah. So uh, the next one will be turned. Uh, yeah, turned. Uh, Astrolift was the first prototype. Turn was the third. Turn was the third. So what's the second? Yeah, I would say I go straight to thirty-eight seconds. Wow, that's a 3D game. Find the gravity ring to able rotate the world. Find the portal ring to open the portal to the gym. Wow, that's great. That's in <laughs> that's UE4. Cool. It, that's just text. Yeah, UE4. <laughs> and uh, this is written in C++, right? No, this was entirely in blueprints. We thought we wouldn't have enough time if we delved into C++. And uh, I, I the plus was for an upcoming point, which was that this was like a mixture of, I'd say all the people of the same type are put together in this project. So this was an all engineer team for me. And there were other teams that were like all artists. So we don't want to make things hard for them by involving C++. That's an interesting part right there. So uh, like how many people were in the team, like five or six? Uh, I, I think no, six. And how many programmers were there with you? Like you were only programmer or there were other programmers? No, five other programmers. Oh, everyone was, everyone was programmer. Yeah, that was a uh, intentionally all programmers, all artists, all tech artists set up. Like, so you don't go to a mixed group. You just go to a all programmer or all uh, or tech artist group. So uh, in, maybe in your final year project, like uh, the capstone project, we will work with a big group, right? Yeah, in capstone projects, uh, you you get to choose your own team. Uh, but in prototypes, it's more like they put you together and it's random teams every time. So this was one of their setups where they would have the same kind of uh, people in one team. So uh, the, yeah, it's just I think to give an insight to all the people who are not engineers on uh, like if you ever need to delve into this stuff, you need to be ready. Wow, that's great, that's great. And I guess uh, you Manel means the, all the students have to uh, like publish a game commercially uh, before they get uh, like get their degrees. Mm, yeah, I think. I think so. Yes, you'd be seeing a whole lot of games come out this this part of the year. Yeah, because actually, everyone's finishing. I was, I was, uh, I was having that uh, um, 
that video from one of your like esports director i don't know what was his name and that was i guess the derek something and it was she like he was telling that it's a time to showcase your games and something like that mm, yeah uh, i think it's ea play was it uh you what was the name ea play yeah ea play right exactly yeah that's cool that's when we got to show our project all right so i already got the second question but first we will finish this one and we will go to the second okay. question all right so uh, we got the turn and which one will be the next uh i'd say all these are short video oh. games and th th I this think, one will be the last game so just this one will be the last video i think because i have a lot of questions after that so just okay. pick the best game uh i think it's not in here you'd have to go to linkedin i'd say the game i'm working on that's the best one all right right that artillery game all right i will just yeah. just show you i'll, just, I'll give you just, a rare insight into what that game really is all right so uh just let me log into my linkedin and i will get into it okay all right uh linkedin don't mind but i have to say you like this video like i will uh, I, i will not exactly put this video as a whole in the youtube but i will uh, make short videos from it and then i will do it like this okay. interview has a lot of value like really Thanks, really great value that i have, i have ever done in any interview like uh, Thanks, you are my I'm second glad. one second one in the ever the first one was about digital marketing and the second one is you and it it already has provided lots of value oh, thanks man i'm glad it helps yeah <laughs> and so yeah uh, uh, if if you pull up my linkedin uh, yeah, i am actually uh, uh, go to my old posts yeah uh, post 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 uh, where is it mm Oh. Mm, where are the posts activities see all yeah posts right right here yeah this is the game and uh, all right so let me just share the screen right now share screen uh linkedin this is the game right mm, well that's not the video but yeah that's the game yeah so so you have done this uh, this game like which one you would like uh, people to see like which video you would like people to see down below down, down below, below. yeah uh, oh come on where oh yeah this one all control buffer buddies this one yeah that's the video <laughs> all right so let's let's see. Wow, that's a great controller. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> going to be fun i just really like feel <laughs> the intense and i'm just sitting right here <laughs> wow that that's great like yeah, that yeah. that will be the that will be the game actually like those player will change the sides and they will uh, like it's a two player game right yeah we're planning to switch controls in between so you don't have to switch seats But yeah, that's the intent of the game. That game projects ah. one, alt control. I'm just imagining, like, what will happen if I am making this kind of game, and I will see other people playing the game and having fun. It's a really like gives a real joy to the soul of a creator. Yeah, that's true. Oh man, I I still remember this day. It was so much fun. 
we were just yelling around in the lab saying, oh, I'm getting the packets here, but I cannot decipher them. Could you reduce the size in there when you send from the Raspberry Pi stuff? That was, that was really fun, man. All right, so uh, we will end this uh, by uh, doing this. This one, this this video, I love this video. Like all the particle effects, I love this. So just tell me how, like, what is the game mechanics? Like, what is this game was all about? Oh, the the primary objective of this game is to really showcase the alt control which you saw in the previous video. Yeah. And uh, we don't really have a solid story cover for the game it's more of like a mechanics showcase we're trying to portray some kind of future distributed civilization and war theme so you're going on war with uh, people from different different civilizations and they have different technology and yeah you're you're alone uh, ship control i mean you're just one ship and you have to go through hordes of enemy ships like in doom like that was the previous. Like the, in the previous video, I saw that two people were changing seats and they were actually battling something like something intense. So yeah, I so, the game has already been made. I guess that's right, right? <laughs> no, we're still in progress, like making the game. And the controller was such that uh, the person on the left or the right, one of them would have this crank to turn right or left. And the other person would have to like crank to go up or down. Like so the it's paddling a two-man job. Yeah. One person All right, that's, pitch, that's one really person cool. control. <laughs> that's I would the old World War One Gophers gun. As I would absolutely love to play the game. If you just like send me a link, like not now <laughs> when it will publish okay. or in the prototype, yeah, sure. I would love to play the game. Like I just sure. love, like I normal time, like I. If I do, do have like a little bit of like chill time, I go to HIO and I just play all the new games and I just download That's it cool. and I play the new games. That's cool, man. So, I have two uh, or three games in HIO. You could try those. Yeah, you just 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 give me the link and I will just okay. put him in this all this uh, the video series and the thing that is happening right now. Uh, this video is now re currently recording uh, stock share. Okay. Uh, actually, what I will do, like this whole, uh, like it may be gone above one and one hour, at least one hour, at least one hour. Yeah. So do it like I will make micro videos from it, and okay. I will do it like a series, like okay. part one, part two, part three, part four, and the mm -hmm. like the values you have provided already. And uh, there are some other questions I would like to ask. It will be a huge thing. Oh, thank you. I think there's a whole lot of stuff more to cover. Uh, I only like told you a few insights into the game world, really. Like, like if we if we can like start doing like everything, it's <laughs> uh it's ten twenty four yeah, and nine. a five or six hour <laughs> video. Online thing. <laughs> yeah. And I would love to. I would love to because I don't have anything other than this to do. I would love to do it. Um, so uh, just uh, I would say the ones that are in University of Utah, you you find about five or six games. Maybe they're all small prototypes. They're not complete games. But but all of the stuff you've seen from me, they're from game, right? Yeah, 2018 to current. Yeah. So you'd say two years, seven months makes. Makes me a prodigy. I'm not really that good. I've spent a whole lot of time before this understanding how game development works. All right. So, like, uh, what's the plan? Like, do you want to uh, like go for a job and like you want to be a game developer and like, or you want to after like I know there's a might be a loan thing and going off yeah. this, and you obviously want to uh, like just complete that loan stuff but mm -hmm. after that would you like to open your own studio that's the first thing that's the first thing that comes to my mind when i say game development that's what i came here for but somehow i believe that i'll be more going towards the job system because i have to be a part of it get this loan cleared out 
and yeah uh, i have to find time now to be an indie developer because after i join a job i probably might not be like having enough time to do stuff right 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 you just go to work and like there will be a very little time to walk maybe up in sunday yeah. or Monday. that's a really that's really pressure that's a really great pressure. yeah plus if you do that you're not giving time to your family or True. friends so uh so question will be uh like have you like have you ever thought of uh like making a triple a game like big on my own of your of your own maybe um, your that, uh, there will be members but like have you have any uh, like thoughts like i have a story that this might be a great triple triple a game like have you ever like done that yeah i have one it's still pending i had formed a team but i think it's dis dissolved now almost i had this game idea with rc plane it's a multiplayer one yeah i don't know i i've put in some good time to make some good flight controls for that game but i don't think it's going any further you are you are a full time student then you are teaching assistant then it will be a very little time for you yeah on your game yeah actually uh, that's that's really do that actually the thing i really want to do because i am really into the engineering stuff because i am an engineer and that's what my actually soul does like soul wants but uh, at the same time i want to document everything like whatever i am doing right now like uh, i will uh, link uh, give you the link of my youtube channel my podcast and all the stuff i'm just really started documenting of everything i'm doing right now because you know because we are an engineer we always like create stuff that's what we do and i started documenting it so all right let's get started uh, for uh, this part we will uh, dive a little bit in about the game industry and the game in current situation of the game industry uh, what we will think this corona and this global economic situation does it will affect all these newcomers who are going for masters or coming in this game development industry does it will affect in this industry i think so yes corona affects everything but uh, i might not be the right person to ask this question because i really don't uh, like delve into details like yeah i'm not really up to date with the industry news like no no i want to know your opinions like uh, for the all the newcomers who are actually like see glo if the global economy falls down it will affect everything that's true but yeah. how it will affect game industry because game industry is kind of a middle between like when this corona situation happens the online industry is booming right now the online mm. streaming online gaming twitch and everything is like yeah booming right now. and game industry mm. is at the juncture of it so so uh, do you think it has a possibility to like like huge like uh, uh, doing a different than other industries like uh, other it industries where you have to go to a job and do stuff and this game industry you actually don't have to you have all the people all over the world and you can do it from your home yeah that's true i think uh, there'll be some kind of boost for indie game developers because this is the time when most of the people will be back home trying out new games right that's true all right so um that's actually happening to he happening here right now because lots of people who just got the job are in in this mindset that they might not have the offer letter and all this thing but i th i don't think that will happen i don't think because if a company gives you the offer letter and gives you a job it will take it won't take you away i guess so uh, yeah. so, so coming to the next question uh, what are your opinions about uh, indian game industry like uh, what are your opinion about that does india have the potential to be the next biggest game industry in the whole world or india will be the biggest marketplace as it is right now yeah india surely is the big like one of the biggest market places you can find on earth yeah and i would definitely say in the like you'll find a whole lot of indians who have a lot of potential to be great game developers 
but uh, I haven't really seen a whole lot of games from India that make a lot of sense to me or touch my heart. So, yeah, yeah, I that, think it's that's yet a very, to be very, seen. very, very low numbers. Like I have seen two games. Yeah. Like one, the name was like Razi, the epic, uh, epic journey. That was a game, and the and another game was the Asura or something, the mythological type of game. Like I, yeah, I, I will true. just show you. I will just show you. Okay. Um, I'd say people over here really get together and there's a lot of companies over here that are really dedicated to game development. I'm not really sure about India. It's not as united in the game development field, I'd say. There, you find game developers everywhere. I mean, not everywhere. It's low on probability, but yeah, they're all scattered around. Not where you want them or you'd have a whole lot of good games coming up. All right. So uh, I'm just uh, just going to show you the uh, trailer. And it is uh, like one of the, like just one game that has gone like huge, like got huge global attention. And it, uh, it okay. got, it's like uh, from an indie studio, I guess. Uh, so just let's see. So this is the game, Razi and Ancient Epic. You can see this, right? Yeah. Yeah. The artwork seems good. This is actually built in Unreal Engine. <laughs> That's cool. And the guy made it is actually also from Mumbai. <laughs> okay, that's really good to know. Oh, is that the start of the gameplay? Actually, I'm going to uh, stop the sound. I can't hear you. Oh. Yeah. I asked if that's the start of the gameplay. Yeah, that's the oh, yeah. That's <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> oh man, this is really good. Yeah, it's it's kind of a platformer, like an adventure, like RPG. I can't say it's platformer, but it is definitely an RPG. Okay. Yeah, this seems like fun. Yeah. Yeah, I that's guess really the cool. Protagonist is the a effects. protagonist is a female, which actually shows the how much we in Indian culture think a women has a energy and it has a cultural effect in this game. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And uh, this game is actually got really global attention and I guess the stuffs they made and this UI and this NPCs, it's really great. Yeah. I'd say there's a whole lot of time put in level design. Yeah. yeah, because that's one of the main parts of uh, platformer games. Level design, I would say, takes up a lot of hard work and skill and creativity. Like, just just look at it. I just I I when I the first saw it, I was like, oh my god, that's the view. Yeah. This is really good stuff. I want to play it now. <laughs> I will definitely buy it when it comes to Steam. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Like maybe this is a safe point, like this is really cool. I'm just uh, yeah. fast forwarding a little bit. Okay. The animations feel really good. Yeah, that's that. This really is a great game. Yeah, I've seen the mobile port for Devil May Cry, but the animations feel a lot toned down. Yeah, uh, and this is the my favorite scene. This is actually my favorite scene because 
just look at it oh my god and the animations and the people walk behind it it was great and i guess it's it's in the steam i haven't like searched it but it's in the steam steam right okay so uh, what do you think what do you think about this game no, i want to download it yeah i i i <laughs> want to download it too <laughs> like this is the this is the kind of stuff we can make when we have a good team together and yeah, i i have seen the most biggest problem as i have i have not seen in other countries but for indians they just want to do stuff on their own and they just want to do it alone it's not like yeah. you, you can do it but it will be more feasible if others are doing it so it will having a less time less amount of resources the time uh, yeah. waste this yeah that's true so, uh, i'd say for a game this big it's easier to divide tasks and easier to make the game faster uh if you have a big team because uh if you like work on single projects like making a small simulation c++ it's not really that you can divide it amongst four people yeah. but if you have a big game you have few people working on the environment people working on the character and the animations uh some of them working on uh explosions and stuff and uh someone making the entire arc work for all the characters and the uh, environment you see in there one's doing lighting yeah it's so yeah so big game actually, it's a big team yeah actually it's a is a it's a big game and actually uh, the i saw this game few weeks uh, like few weeks back and uh, i just literally saw uh, like the name of the programmer and i found it on linkedin and i i hope that maybe we could chat because he is also from an indian and i would really love to talk about him about the game development and the game he made so uh, the the very problem what do you think what is the problem for our indians like in this indian game industry like there is a piracy problem obviously mm. like we all we i actually i also am a game developer but i also downloaded a lot of pirated games that's that's yeah, for shame sure. so it's a problem but what can we say that's that everyone is doing we are doing so do you think mm. it will affect in uh, in the long term in big market games well i would say if piracy is creeped in so much into the system already it's difficult to get it out and you can't really do anything about it it's just like saying i'm turning vegan because i care more about animals and dairy products yeah alone you cannot do anything so uh, like this is the problem uh, this is a problem this is a real problem but the solution i guess already in the market uh, the pubg has made its pc version online clients yeah online clients exactly yeah they totally online so no one is uh, getting a pirated version even they are getting a pirated version they are, they can't connect to the server yeah so that kind of the stuff and the another mm. thing that is happening right now is for like uh, naughty dog and uh, the red dead redemption is doing uh, with their games like totally for the console version not for pc mm. so they yeah. uh, cannot download it from the torrent and play it on the pc i don't think that's good practice because pc is a very big market and i yeah. don't know why they're missing it but uh, if a pc is a good market they have to like have to connect with the internet so that the game won't get pirated yeah but i think that's not a very feasible solution for indie game developers which uh, no, it, i like to think it from that perspective because you have to spend a whole lot of um, money to keep a server up uh, so, if you're making a multiplayer game so, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's 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 really true hmm. uh, so uh, like i i don't really know what if there is a permanent solution to that i don't really know so uh, so i'm going to end this with a last question that okay. is uh, what do you think right now is the biggest problem in the game industry for the especially about games like what is the biggest problem and then i will share my point of view too 
what is the biggest problem? Yeah, I'd say there's a whole lot of game developers in the world who are not getting together. Ooh, like it's a valuable point. Like there's a lots of people doing all and on, but if they are doing it together, they might create the next big step. Yeah, that. And uh, there's also a whole lot of talented game developers who really don't uh, like they don't get the opportunity to get into game development because of maybe um, I don't know pressure of some kind, career choices. Yeah, game development seems more of a risk in India. Yeah, the other game, like literally when I told my parents that I'm going to have a master's in a game development, they were like, what is game development? They didn't have any idea. Although my, my father is also an engineer, but he's from civil. And he know that game development is also a feasible choice. So I, oh, I told them, okay, wait for three months. Let me make a game and then I will show you. So I show them, I walk in my GRE and got a good score. So all these things kind of added together and now they are really supportive. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it so, takes a while to get that approval. You know. Yeah, so that that's the kind of the thing like, I don't know who, but uh, someone said to me like, uh, don't tell them, just show them that this is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. That's that's one of the points. Plus, if you really want to be an indie game developer, you don't see money first. You see a whole lot of sweat and it takes years to make money. And some people don't even find that breakthrough. Uh, lots of people just want to like want to get rich quick and do this stuff as well. But this doesn't connect in any like not in this game uh, development industry, not in any industry. If you want to make a lot of money, it will take a lot of time and, and it should, I guess. Yeah, that's true. And plus you need to really know how the system or the market works because I, after I made bonds, I knew that it's not going to be easy to market it. And 6.25 K is, uh, you know, a number that I really didn't know myself till it happened a few weeks ago. Uh, I only kept track of it till it was like 3000 and my friend really helped push it. There was also a time when we spent like uh, 20 or $40 for just two days of advertisement of Google play. And that got us like 200 to 500 downloads in those two days, but that really wasn't enough. Like it wasn't getting the game to the people who needed it. All right. Yeah, so you really knew how to do that. You digital marketing would be a great, like optional choice, but a great choice for marketing at, at least for indie games. Like yeah. I actually think like, uh, like this is actually happening right now for me. And as I have a little understanding about all these things, I could say that if you just like document your journey about making these games and put it all in social medias, like, not just LinkedIn, but the Facebook, not obviously Facebook, it doesn't have any organic reach as well, but uh, in YouTube, Instagram. Instagram, and mainly TikTok. TikTok, I know, TikTok. like, I know what's the reaction would be. Like, there is lots of bad stuff happening with TikTok right now, like all the lip syncing stuff and that. But TikTok has the online gaming community that's growing up, and there's no, really, no competitors at that moment there's just one player that name is like uh, i don't i can't say his name but there's just one just one guy who's, who's an indie developer he's making games and just making videos that's all it the hashtag game development is all about it if you could make it yeah. and uh, giving it uh, just taking from uh, like a person like i'm kind of like a brother like for you like just take yeah. it from me if you could do it you will be like <laughs> get like at least 100 to 2000, 2000 like 200,000 subscribers in a week. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's a, that's a really good idea. I never thought of TikTok. Like actually I am like, I know that I am a like this, this uh, whole thing that a video is doing for actually this is more of my second company, uh, Tyrant. And this is a digital okay. media company where I want to showcase all the stories 
and uh, all the stuff from happening from the people like us not the not the like not all the successful people who have already mm -hmm. did everything and if and people does know about them i just want to share the stories like others and people might be people might be like really interested about it so take it from me just go to like tiktok install it find the hashtag game developer and you will see there is a lots of like there is a lots of like gaps lots of vacancies in there there's no okay. one in unreal engine no one is doing it from like the games you are trying to make it's awesome and no one is doing in that so in that's the market right there and you have to you have okay. to take that right and the it's organic a, reach really in the idea. huge thanks man i'll i'll give it a try first yeah, thing I, actually i am give it a try i i haven't i haven't done anything yet but i will and that's why i'm telling you like if i am doing it you should do it too because we are in the same position as well yeah hmm. so uh, that's about it and thank you so much for coming through yeah. this interview and i will obviously send you all the links and i will uh, okay. as i said i will like show this as a video series and i will make okay. sure everyone everyone i know and a lot more views i get i will make sure that so i will uh, i will i obviously tell other people and uh, when i will give links if you could if you, you if you could show your other friends that will be really helpful thanks a whole lot man this interview was fun thank you so much and thank <laughs> it's very nice to meet you in person because i yeah. never done anything like this is the second interview in the whole world i am doing it right now and you are from you are actually in us so it's a big opportunity for me yeah that's cool okay thanks man that's so, normal uh, all right so good night and uh, maybe it's not it's good, morning. good noon it's afternoon here <laughs> yeah all right see you later cool yeah see you later man